How big do sandworms get? From tiny little plankton to worms bigger than a football stadium. Dune has featured both tiny little makers and huge sandworms, and I'm here to show you just how much of a difference there is between these worms. Most of all though, we'll find out exactly how large a sandworm can get. And here's a hint. The ones we've seen in the movies are tiny compared to the biggest. Starting off though, sandworms begin as sand plankton. These are microscopic creatures that feed upon traces of melange scattered by sandworms on the Arakeen sands. The sand plankton are food for the giant sandworms, but also grow and burrow to become what the Fremen call little makers later on. These sand plankton eventually mature into sand trout, the larval stage of the sandworm life cycle. The sand trout are described as flat and leathery in Children of Dune, with Leto II noting that they are roughly diamond shaped with no head, no extremities, no eyes, and coarse interlacings of extruded cilia. They can find water easily, and squeezing a sand trout yields a sweet green syrup. When water is flooded into the sand trout's excretions, a pre-spice mass is formed. At this stage, gases are produced which result in a characteristic blow, or explosion. After exposure to sun and air, this mass becomes the spice melange, which is harvested by the Fremen and by other factions. Also after these spice blows, the sand trout slowly form into very small sandworms over a period of about six years. The Fremen call these roughly three meter long worms Little Makers, after the conventional name of an adult sandworm, the Shai Halud, or the Maker. These Little Makers eventually form into juvenile or stunted sandworms, reaching about nine meters in length. Water becomes fatal to sandworms starting at this stage, even in small doses. Water that entered a sandworm's body would act as a catalyst to accelerate its metabolism to the point that it became unstable and its vital biological functions failed. This was a violent and presumably painful death for the sandworm. It was occasionally necessary, however, since the byproduct of the sandworm water mixture was the highly toxic poison called the Water of Life, which the Reverend Mothers used on various occasions, including the rite which allows a Bene Gesserit to become a Reverend Mother on Arrakis. These juvenile sandworms eventually grow into adult sandworms. By anyone's standards, sandworms could grow to an enormous size. Dr. Yue cited that specimens up to 450 meters long were spotted by observers in the deep desert. To make a comparison, the largest animal on Earth was believed to be a blue whale measuring in at only 33 meters, or about 7% of a large sandworm's length. They have an array of crystalline teeth which are used primarily for rasping rocks and sand. During its first close encounter with a sandworm in Dune, Paul notes that its mouth was some 80 meters in diameter, with curved crystal teeth in the shape of Chris knives glinting around the rim. Sandworms are described as incredibly tough by Liet Kynes, who further notes that high voltage electrical shock applied separately to each ring segment is the only known way to kill and preserve them. Atomics are the only explosive powerful enough to kill an entire worm, with conventional explosives being unfeasible as each ring segment has a life of its own. Water is poisonous to the worms, but it's in too short of a supply on Arrakis to be of any use against any but the smallest of them. The smell of the sandworm has been particularly documented. A strong, flinty cinnamon smell exuded from the beast, especially from its mouth. Some said it could be smelled before it was even seen. The presence of the spice melange was intense, and so was its odor. The approach of a sandworm toward its breach point was often indicated by the dry lightning that frequently occurred in the area. This was a result of static electricity being discharged into positively charged air. Any Fremen that was poised to ride the beast as it rolled its open scale toward the highest point could literally mount the worm. As long as the scales remained open, the sandworm would not submerge. Maker hooks were then placed towards the front of the beast to control lateral movement. As a result, worm riding became a viable and even sacred method of transport for the Fremen across the surface of the planet. Sometimes distances were even measured in sandworms, which was the distance one could ride a worm until it was exhausted and allowed to submerge. A 20 worm ride would be a far and difficult journey. To the planet's Fremen population, the creature was a spiritual symbol of their faith and they saw them as physical embodiments of the one god of their original Zen Sunni religion. Sandworms are known to grow to hundreds of meters in length and are estimated to be able to live for thousands of years. But these old sandworms, known to the Fremen as great-grandfathers of the desert, are rumored to grow to over 2,000 meters long. And this was confirmed when Paul became a sand rider by summoning a worm that appeared to be 2,400 meters or more in length. That's over a mile and a half long. There are rumors and legends among the Fremen that even these worms could be dwarfed by the worms of the deep deserts. It's crazy to think that these monstrous creatures that could devour entire ships or battalions of men all started out as microscopic plankton living in the sands of Arrakis. And I can't wait to see if we get to see any of these absurdly large worms of the deep desert in Dune Messiah. But please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.